Cars, uh, heavy rain starting to move in, and that's a big factor today, and it could be in the way the game is played. As the Jets come in as one of the five co-leaders for first, or one of the five last place teams in the AFC East, but right now they're on a roll. Good afternoon, everyone. Don Cricky with Paul McGuire. The Jets coming off their biggest win in a long time, the Monday night upset of Seattle. The Chiefs off to the worst start in the 28-year history of the franchise. They're one and seven, and yet, Paul, the Chiefs are favored. Why? I think the biggest reason the Chiefs are favored is because of Frank Sire starting at quarterback. Now, here's a young man that got hurt in the offseason. He was the man that was picked to start for this football team at the beginning of the year. Obviously, that didn't happen. It's going to happen today. They like his arm. They think it's very strong. The other thing is you take a look at the Kansas City Chiefs defense, the secondary. All four guys are on the all-pro team. The problem that they have is the two outside linebackers. They are just not doing the job. They're not covering, and they're not making the plays at the line of scrimmage that they should be. Jets feel they really got it together Monday night, and the score would indicate that, upsetting a very strong Seattle team, and the Jets could get better today because one of their great players over the years is back, Joe Klecko, out since last December and had another major knee operation, but he's ready to go, Paul, and says he feels great. I think he's the inspirational leader of this football team, but I don't know if I would start him in this game, especially with the rain, the slippery field. Maybe if they're having a problem, put him in later on. So with the rain falling, Coach Joe Walton sends his Jets out now. Joe Walton in his fifth year as head man of the Jets, and in the 28-year history of this franchise, he is the only Jet coach with a winning record. He's 39-33 and 33 overall. He really cracked the whip after a poor performance when the Jets were beaten a couple of weeks ago by the Colts. And then they came up with their biggest win in a long time Monday night, beating... A team, Paul, that many people feel is the best in the AFC, Seattle. Yeah, I think it's shocked everybody in the country as far as the National Football League is concerned because Seattle is probably the strongest team in the AFC. The Jets will kick it off to start the game. And today's kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. Kansas City drops back Larry Moriarty and Paul Palmer. Palmer, the rookie from Temple in Philadelphia. Ran one back in the opener this season for 95 yards and a touchdown against San Diego. A spinning kick into the rain, and Palmer takes it at the seven. Walter Payton changes a pace move, and he accelerates up to about the 23-yard line. Frank Sire, out to play quarterback. Akoya, highly regarded rookie runner, the leading rusher in the AFC. But has been troubled by fumbles. Moriarty, another big back in the backfield with him. Carson's a tremendous receiver. Carlos Carson, he'll go to him a lot. Offensive line full of very high draft choices, but they've been spotty at best so far this season. No consistency in the blocking for KC. Sires turning out on first and ten. Hits an open man. It's tight end. John Hayes has the ball. And he's out across to the 49-yard line. So Sire, quick of foot, loses the pass rusher and then hits a wide-open tight end for a 25-yard gain. And Don, when you first look at this play, it looks like it might have been a busted play. It's a fake toss. Watch what Sire does. He fakes, and now it's a bootleg to the outside. Only one man close to him, and that's Alex Gordon, the, the linebacker. But he gets it to Hayes, and look at the blocking downfield. A little chicken fighting, but it's still blocking by Carlos Carson. So the Chiefs hit a big one on first down. First down and 10 now for them at the 49-yard line. Akoya, both arms on the ball, and the big guy from Nigeria hits across the 50 to the 47-yard line of the Jets. Roy Benson knocked him down. He's been playing well. Lecco in at nose tackle. A very positive development for the Jets. Lions and Bennett, the defensive ends in their front three. Alex Gordon, the rookie from Cincinnati, leads the team in sacks with three. Got them all before the strike. Crable's been the Jets' best linebacker, and he leads the team in tackles. Carl Howard starts at right corner for Russell Carter, who's down this week with an injury. No score, opening drive. Kansas City with second down and six coming up. Sire swings it out, well-thrown ball, and it's almost intercepted as Okoye had to tear him off his hands. And the ball was up for grabs and very nearly picked off by Carl Howard, the right corner. This ball is thrown just a little bit behind Christian Okoye. The offensive line blocking very well at this point. But Okoye, if you're not going to catch it, at least keep it out of the hands of the defensive people because what's going to happen here, watch Carl Howard, number 28. He's got his eye on the ball, almost makes the catch.
So now third down and six comes up. Carson and Stefan Page are both flanked to the right side. McCoy and Palmer, the two rookie runners, are in the backfield. Carson in motion. Sire needs six. Jets are going to get him back at the 47-yard line. So Gaston Hall comes busting through, as does Barry Bennett. And the Jets get a sack. They stop the Kansas City opening drive, and the Chiefs have to punt it. Let's watch Barry Bennett. Barry Bennett and Gaston, as you said, both get there. Now, let's just take a look at they're trying to Baldinger, number 77, and trying to work on Bennett. And you're talking about two people. But Gaston is actually the man that forced Sire up inside, and he tripped over his own man. Here's Kelly Goodburn now to punt the ball. He was a strike season acquisition, punted very well, and downfield is Townsell. He's been punting the ball very well at a 91-yard return for a touchdown and a win over Seattle. But the Chiefs special teams, and they pride themselves on good special teams coverage, stops him short. 35-yard punt. Ball made the tackle. Jets get the ball when we come back to Kansas City. Is the best running back in NFL history. You saw some of the great ones looked at on NFL Live prior to the kickoff. You can vote with a 900 number. Jim Brown, Walter Payton, we're told, has the early lead in the voting. Gail Sayers, O.J. Simpson. Others have a number also. And that 50 cent charge per call. NBC will donate all that money to charity. Raymond McNeil and Roger Vick in the backfield behind Ken O'Brien as the Jets go on offense for the first time in the game. No score. O'Brien, the Freeman McNeil, a dancer up the middle of the field, looking like an all-pro player that he has been, and he comes across the 35-yard line. A 15-yard gain, weaving through the defensive front of Kansas City. Jets on offense. With Freeman McNeil back in as a starter. Roger Vick, the rookie fullback from Texas A&M. Power blocker. Toon, a great one at wide receiver. Sown an underrated player. Weaver starts at right end. Mickey Schuler is in uniform, but probably won't play because of an ankle injury. O'Brien, quick out. Al Toon down with the ball, and he's out to the 41-yard line. First down throw, good for about five. As we check the Chiefs on defense, every one of these front four high number one draft choices when they came out of college. In fact, the end still in Bell were the second player picked in the entire draft the years they came out. Linebackers somewhat inexperienced. This is a vulnerable area and the Jets will work on it as they did in that last play. Del Rio, Hackett, and Pearson. And the defensive backs, as Paul McGuire pointed out, probably the best group in the NFL. Second down and five for the Jets. Right there, to Freeman and he does well to get to the line of scrimmage as Jack Del Rio a third year linebacker from Southern California makes the knockdown it'll be third down and about five Jack Del Rio that time did something that the linebackers have not been doing here at Kansas City he stayed at the line of scrimmage and it's strong to play out to the outside look for some help maybe a half a yard gain on the play the linebackers on the outside cannot commit themselves inside let the defensive lineman do that and the middle linebacker Big down now for the Jets, as you see, third and a long four. Ball just across their 41-yard line. O'Brien from the shotgun has an open man, but the ball is dropped by tight end Rocky Cleaver. Wide open in the middle of the KC zone for a first down, but in this rain, it skips off his hand, so the Jets have to punt the ball. And Don O'Brien can't put this ball on target any better than he did. Cleaver is down. He went to the zone, looked right in the middle, hooked up where the linebackers were in front. Defensive backs behind. You see Deron Cherry there. He just dropped the ball. Michael Clemens, first-year player from William & Mary, is back to return Dave Jennings' punt. There's the rookie. Jennings is in his 14th year. High knuckleball. It's short, but they're going to let it hop. And it takes a jet roll. It's going to go inside the 20, and the Jets will down it right about the 20-yard line. So Kansas City gets its second possession in a moment with 12.57 to play in the first quarter and no score on the board. Dave Jennings just became the NFL's all-time punt yardage leader. He just wrapped up the ball. It'll never be kicked again, Paul. When he just hit, he passed Gerald Wilson, the longtime Kansas City Chief. Jennings with over 43,000 yards career punting. Ian Leahy, the Jet place kicker, liable to play longer than George Blanda. <laughs> Both in their 14th years now. 
Herman Hurd takes on jet tacklers. Barry Bennett puts a good shoulder pop on him and knocks him down at the 22-yard line. Nothing much happening in the early games. Nothing happening here in Kansas City. The game clock is out on the scoreboard. Bill Maz, the nose tackle for the Chiefs, came off the field and either kicked it or bumped it, but it threw off the scoreboard clock, so they're keeping it by hand. We're not certain how much time is left. It's stuck on 1257. This could be a long game. Well, if it stays on 1257, we'll be here till tomorrow. Akoya. Big guys gun shy after those fumbles that have cost the Chiefs games against the Bears and the Steelers. You know, Joe klecko has been out so long and he's still got that cock stance when he lines up. Fights off the center, Donnelly. Gets blocked by Attics, number 61, but still gets rid of him and gets back into the hole. Not making the play. The play was made at the line of scrimmage. That, and he's limping again. You know, I again, I didn't know whether that, I were the coach when I'd start him or not in this game. Gerald Nichols who had a tremendous game in the lineup now for the Jets had his best game ever against uh, Seattle Monday night. Here's Sire from the shotgun on third and long. He's got an open receiver, but there's too much on it. Stephon Page diving for the ball can't get to it, and so the Chiefs have to punt it again. He had Stephon Page going right down the middle of the field, wide open. They had a double coverage on him. They had the corner covering him and a safety behind. Just take a look at Page. If that ball is a half a yard closer, he makes the catch. Usually he makes that kind of catch. For the game, Paul, Homer Smith is the new offensive coordinator for the Chiefs. Tom, he said the key is that Sire hits his early passes because if he does, he can really move a team. But so far, he's not been able to move the club after that first 25-yard throw to his fullback. To his tight end. Now Goodburn is ready to punt again. Mantel back deep again for the Jets. Into the rain the ball goes. Deep to the 37. Chiefs covering excellently again. And the knockdown's made at the 39-yard line. So the Jets send back out their offense after that 39-yard punt. Hoffman was down to make the play on special teams. Eric, smile. The last time the Jets and the Chiefs played, Pat Ryan led the Jets to a victory in the AFC wildcard game last December. And this quarterback draw on a third down gave the Jets a first down. They went in to score a touchdown that brought them from behind. There's Pat Ryan on the sideline now. Frank Gans, the coach of the Chiefs, Paul, said, we don't care who they start a quarterback. We think they're both good. <laughs> they are. They don't Ryan lose Cooper, anything. Two touchdowns in that game. Handoff now, running with the ball is Freeman McNeil, who busted one for 15 yards in his first carry today. First down carries out to the 43. It was good for four. Dino Hackett and Mike Bell made the stop for the Chiefs. Now, if you're going to attack this Chiefs defense, and, and even though they talk so much about the outside linebackers not making the coverage that they should be making, if you're going to attack the Chiefs defense, you're better off attacking it right in the middle of the field, anywhere from 12 to 15 yards. The defensive ends very fast, tough to run wide on. This time McNeil does it, and with the dive, appears to have got enough for the first down. Dino Hackett in pursuit, a second-year middle linebacker from Appalachian State. He'll hit anything that moves, they say here in KC. His problem is getting from the middle to the outside. He gets outside. The guy that made the play not work for Kansas City is number 50, standing there, Jack Del Rio. He took an inside move, which enabled Freeman McNeil to get to the outside. The Jets have a woeful record coming off short week games, off Monday night games. They're three and 12 over the years. Joe Walt has talked about that in practice all week as Roger Vick, the rookie, gets his first carry and he pounds into the defense for a gain of about four yards, maybe five. Again, Hackett was the man who filled and made the hit, although it was five yards downfield. That, that play has to be made at the line of scrimmage by the defensive end on that side, which would be Mike Bell and also Jack Del Rio, the linebacker on that side. Because first of all, Vic is as big as he is, does he does not get there that soon. Now take a look at Del Rio. He's playing behind uh, Mike Bell right there, and then he takes when he takes the outside, they get to his feet, cut him down. He's not helping. Back to live action on second down and five. The Jets go to a power run right up the middle, and Roger Vic carries it. He has not been productive as a runner, particularly since the strike. He's been struggling, but the Jets think he's going to be a terrific player. See what he's done in the last two games. Virtually nothing except he has had some fine blocks that have sprung big plays. 
Coach Frank Gans, former Navy fighter pilot. Man motivates his team with war stories. Jimmy Doolittle's raid on Tokyo. His son went to the Citadel, you know. He did. Try one. I know you did. Al Davis recruited you. Told you you wouldn't have to march or carry a gun. You were there about five minutes and you had your head shaved and you had a rifle in your arm. <laughs> Isn't that true? And I've been marching ever since, but I say yes, sir, to you. Uh, yeah. Third and very short. Only about a foot for the Jets, maybe less. I back Nuu Paola. Here's a pitch back. All the leads to blocking, and Freeman McNeil runs it and gets across the 40 for the first down. Tackle by Dino Hackett. First down. Lorenzo Hampton ran six yards for a Dolphin touchdown. They're out in front of the Colts, who might be coming back to the field. Cleveland's gone up 3-0 on Buffalo, a defense now in Buffalo that's pretty effective with the new Cornelius Bennett blitzing quarterbacks. Detroit over heavily favored Washington in the first quarter. And the Rams on a 46-yard touchdown run by Charles White have taken a 7-3 lead at St. Louis. No score here in the first quarter. 7.25 to play in it. Gets on first and 10. And Dan O'Brien Jets have given up 42 sacks this season, the most in the NFL. Mike Bell got him, number 99. Jim Sweeney's trying to block him, number 53. Look at the top side of your screen, and you'll see Bell. He gets his arms out. Now watch, he just moves Sweeney to the inside and gets around him. What helps here is O'Brien actually backs out right into Bell. O'Brien coming off his best game of the season. That's his 150th career sack. But it should also be pointed out, Paul, that he takes the sack rather than puts the ball up into the secondary for a much more costly interception. Because he has receivers and a strong arm, he can get downfield and pick up that yardage. Now you just try to get 10 of it back. They go to Freeman McNeil on second and long, and he gets across the Kansas City 45-yard line down to the 42. Gain of maybe seven or eight yards on the play. McNeil getting the ball a lot here today. Had a very poor game against Indianapolis. And then came off the bench to play extremely well against Seattle. Six carries for 37 yards. Johnny Hector, who started for him against Seattle, moved into the number one spot, is out this week with a knee and ankle injury. He's not here. Coach Walt met with every one of his players after that cold game. One afternoon, spent five hours. Some meetings, they said, lasted... 30 seconds for people who played well. Some lasted almost a half hour. The Jets came back and played their best game then against Seattle. O'Brien gets time running out of it. Takes a look and dumps it off. And with the ball is Dennis Blygen. And he's down inside the 35 yard line, still short of the first down on that third down throw. You know, when you give credit to someone like this, the offensive line held pretty well, except the, the defensive secondary for Kansas City had every single person covered. They went to six defensive backs, and O'Brien cannot find anyone. Now, he's going to find Blige coming out. It's not enough for the first down, but he dumps the ball, does not take the sack there because he had someone to throw the ball to. And I like that when a quarterback won't, you know, he'll take a sack. Pat Leahy, who is one of the very best, will try a long one now. 49-yard attempt. His only miss this season was from 62 yards. He's 9 of 10. He's got the distance. But Leahy is wide. And so the Jets' first chances at points now up short are wide. And so Kansas City will take over the ball in good field position. In a it has not been a happy story here in Kansas City. The first eight games of the Chiefs season, their strike team, was among the worst. They were 0-3 during the strike season. As you see where the overall stats now rank the Chiefs right with their one loss record, Paul. Yeah, when you, look, when you look at that defense, so that defense is not that bad. Offense, maybe. Defense surely is not that bad. Sire at quarterback. Throw oh, and an open receiver and Carlos Carson, who is a dancer from LSU. He's nimble, quick of foot. He is a sensational player, doesn't get the press he deserves. That's his 28th catch this season. That was good for 23 yards. He's got five touchdown passes this season. Jerry Holmes is trying to cover him out here one-on-one. -on -one. Now watch Carlos Carson. He runs Holmes out of the ballpark because you don't even see Holmes come in when the ball is there. Carlos Carson, great hands, and Sire knows he's got two great receivers on either side, Carson and Stephon Page. The 
Chiefs have outgained their opposition just once this season. In fact, just once in their last 11 regular season games. They are outgaining the Jets so far, but there's no score. On Cricky with Paul McGuire as Sire throws again, but he puts it right up for grabs, and the Jets take it. Jerry Holmes with the interception on the run. Holmes in open field. Can't beat that tackle, but he is back out to the 45-yard line. Irv Eatman, an offensive tackle, knocked him down. So the young QB making his first throws today in the NFL ever throws one up and it's taken back. Two things happen here. Henry Marshall, number one, either runs the wrong pattern or Sire does not read the defense. Because look what happens. You see Henry Marshall running downfield. Holmes is there. He's just playing the ball. No problem at all. The rush was on by Crable. But Holmes didn't ever made a move. If they throw the ball deep, he's already by Holmes for a touchdown. I'm talking about Marshall. I gotta believe he ran the wrong pattern. Whatever, the ball is back to the Jets in this scoreless game. 6-16 to play in the first quarter. Jets have beaten the Chiefs last three times they played. McNeil, who's been getting the ball virtually every time on first down, runs it to the 47-yard line. When we look at Take a look at the bottom side of the screen here. You're going to see Crable number 50 coming in on Sire. But this ball is gone. He does not even see Crable at this point in time. It's obvious because Crable knocks him down. But he didn't even see him. He was concentrating on a position to throw the ball. The question is, did he throw the ball in the right spot and Marshall run the wrong play or vice versa? We talked Paul about all the sacks that O'Brien takes, but he's also thrown the fewest interceptions in the league, just three. Freeman McNeil, a super back. Running with abandon, and again, right up the middle behind trap blocking. He takes it down to the 40-yard line, a 14-yard gain. And they go right up the middle. Just take a look. First of all, the offensive line of the Jets, they're all guards or centers. And look at the double teaming right there. Vic gets in. He gets an excellent block on Hack at the middle linebacker that enabled Freeman McNeil to get through the hole. They pick up 15 yards or so it's first down. McNeil, as you see, already with 50 yards and eight carries, came in with under 200 for the season. The Jets get another big play, and now they're down to the 40-yard line of Kansas City. Chief linebackers can see play way off, so they can't be blocked, run and tackle, but they make too many tackles downfield. Long ball, double coverage, and Al Toon thinks he was bumped, but the back judge right there says no. Albert Lewis and Duran Cherry. Cherry's been to the Pro Bowl the last four years. Free agent out of Rutgers, Albert Lewis was voted the MVP of the Chiefs team, number 29 by his fellow players. Well, Albert Lewis knows here, but number 20, Deron Cherry, is going to give him help to the middle of the field. And that time, O'Brien did throw into double coverage. Tune goes off. Kurt Sohn goes wide to the left now. Gets again working with double tight ends. Raymond McNeil doing it on his own gets ahead for four yards and a marker comes in after the play. <laughs> I was just watching Koch, number 74, the defensive tackle. Freeman McNeil went right into the line of scrimmage where he was supposed to. Koch thought he had him. He dove at him. McNeil just took a step backwards and went back out to the outside. Koch was the number one draft choice of Cincinnati, the right tackle for the Chiefs. They gave up on him. Came in here as a free agent, which is rare. Played pretty well now in his fourth year. Holding offense, number 43. But he felt Ten awful yards, silly. Still second down. Don, because he knew he had McNeil. McNeil's coming right into his hole, and all of a sudden, he disappeared. Watch right up in the middle of the field. You'll see number 74, Koch. He's there right now. Watch it. 74 is there. McNeil just jumps back out of him, and Koch just lays there on the ground, banging the ground. There was holding on the play. Ironically, Frank Gans, the Chiefs coach, recruited Freeman McNeil to UCLA. Good throw and catch. Coming up with the ball is Kurt Sohn. And that was a game now down to the 29-yard line. And on second and forever, they get a first down. They get 21 yards on second and 20. Art Still and Dino Hackett finally got him. But what a catch by Sohn on the run below the waist. Well, what? Sohn's going to come out here and block, Don. See him standing there? He's just delaying now, waiting to get outside. Wait till the linebackers clear out. Once he does that, the linebackers come up. That's a, that's a defensive man right there, number 24, J.C. Pearson, and missed him a safety because they were in pass defense. But he just waited till everything cleared out, looked across the front. It's almost like a screen. And it was good for 21. So just his sixth reception of the season for the longest game he's had. 21 yards on second and 20. Now 
first and ten. Back to McNeil. And the Chiefs are now hunting 24. They know he's going to get the ball a lot. Aaron Pearson, number 96, an outside linebacker, got him first. Buffalo is now on the board at Cleveland. Jim Kelly and the boys. <laughs> Paul McGuire is the Bills' putter in their two championship seasons some years ago. They wore Roman numerals in those days in their shirts. Before helmets. B8. <laughs> <laughs> 64 and 65. Second and about 11. Tip ball up for grabs it. Aram's off the turf at the 19 yard line. Rocky Cleaver was the intended receiver. It might have been Big Pete Koch who got a hand up. 74 missed the tackle. That's Koch. Let's just see if maybe he's the guy that gets his hand up and knocks the ball down. Here comes Koch inside, and he is the man. Bingham is blocking him. Kurt Zone had to come back into the huddle and say, hey, you know, on that last play, I was running down here along the sideline. No one would cover me. When I'm alone, throw it to me. Well, he's gone wide to the left now. Has Al Toon. That's on third and 11. Dip throw. It goes to Freeman McNeil. Look at him make the tacklers miss. And Freeman McNeil is short of the first down, but down to the 22. And very much within range for a usually sure-footed Pat Leahy, who missed from 49 on his first try of the day. Only a second miss on a field goal try in 11 attempts this season. And actually, when you look at what the Jets have been doing this whole first quarter, Doug, except for the one long pass to Al Toon, what they're doing is they're throwing just junk patterns, little seven, eight-yard plays, and picking up 10 and 12 on it. This will be a 40-yarder. Pat Leahy was an All-American soccer player 14 years ago at the University of St. Louis. Made a lot of money with that soccer kick in his. Spins one up. And Leahy. It caroms up the upright, but it goes through. Trick, Trick shot. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes. <laughs> he played the wetness of the goalpost. Let it slide in. A little bank shot. This ball looks like it's going to hit it dead on, but it goes, it curves just a tad and in. Joe Walton never in doubt for the coach. <laughs> well, maybe a little. <laughs> it, you got three, Joe. <laughs> so, you know, maybe he didn't see it. You know. So the Jets score first with 2:03 to play in the first quarter. And they've taken a 3-0 lead in that Buffalo-Cleveland game. A safety for the Bills. Mark Kelso recovered a fumble and ran it back 56 yards. Give the Bills a 7-3 lead. This is a day that on NFL Live, you can vote for the greatest runner of all time. And there are some 900 numbers you can call to vote for your favorite, be it Gail Sayers or Jim Brown or Walter Payton or O.J. Simpson or others. Cookie Gilchrist. Cookie wasn't dead, was he? No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Where is he today? He's down in Delaware. I don't know. <laughs> there are the numbers in the 50 cent charge. Call NBC Sports. It'll donate all the money to charity. High spinning kickoff by Leahy, and Paul Palmer, the rookie, takes it from the two. Open field for the moment, and then struck hard at the 25 yard line. Coming now to get him, Dennis Blygen and Kerry Glenn. 23-yard return. Here's the city's been in the Jets' territory twice. I don't think they've been much further than the 40-yard line. One in an interception, and then they, they had to punt the ball away. They just got to do something offensively to get it going. The Jets are playing you know, a little loose on defense, but they shut them down when they have to. Paul Palmer returned the kickoff is in the game from scrimmage with the Koya, the two rookie runners drafted in the first and second round. Sire. Carson looking to his right, and the ball comes left. He was open. Sire is out of the University of Kansas. He played at Edison High School in Huntington Beach, California. He was one of the most recruited players in the country. He was not drafted in the NFL. He went to the U.S. Football League for two years, played with the now defunct LA Express, was with Seattle for a while. Set all the records in the Big Eight, breaking Lynn Dickey's records. And that last play, they had the perfect call. They had the real quick out to Carlos Carson. They had the blitz on by Hamilton, the corner, the safety man, and they got away with it. Just didn't throw the ball well enough. 
Rain is heavier. <laughs> McCoy will move a line, won't he? <laughs> yeah. I was talking to Ditka a couple weeks ago when Kansas City played uh, Chicago, and Ditka said, there is no one man that I know of in the National Football League that can bring him down. This guy can move some real estate. Watch when Okoye hits in. Now, he's going to get blocked by Donnelly up in front, the center. But when he hits in, you don't just stop him right there. You could, you could see that Benson, Troy Benson, the linebacker, came back about three yards, and there were two other guys holding on to Okoye. Got to be something better than hitting that guy with your head like Benson did. Benson's been playing very well for the Jets. Inside backer from Pittsburgh. Third now and six. Right on the run, and Sires across the 40-yard line for a first down. It's remarkable that he can run at all, let alone run well. He was very badly injured in an auto accident last May. Ankle was operated on. He had a dislocated hip, and here he is running against the Jets for a first down. I love his guts, but I don't understand the common sense in this thing. Now, you just take a look at Sire. He's being chased from the backside. That's Gaston 90, 99 chasing him. But now is when you slide. You got the first down. Get down. They start beating on your head. They'll do that. Oh, ho. <laughs> Makes a great shake. In the rules. <laughs> we have the hard hats on. Here is Sire looping it out. On page as the ball slips away. And a marker comes in late. Oh, that looks like a good defensive play on first look from here. That's why we have the review. If you look at the official, though, the official was going to throw the flag. He just couldn't get it out of his pocket because I knew that it was pass interference from seeing it from this angle, and he had a tough time getting the flag out. Number Finally, then it looks like it's late. Defense. But it's not. Pass interference. First down. Rich Miano called for the interference call. All right. But look where Sire puts this ball. Over the safety. Miano has got his left arm around Stefan Page. Now, you see the official, he's trying to get his flag out, and he finally does. He went to his pocket, it wasn't there, it was in his belt, and he's got loose pants, and it slipped down, and it took him time to get it out of there. <laughs> when he did get it out, the Chiefs had a first down inside the Jet 40. Jets lead it 3-0. 22 seconds to play in the first quarter. Give it to the bull. Plays back to the bull, and here's a throw and a catch. The tight end Hayes is down to the 25-yard line. A gain of about 14 yards on the play, and another first down for Kansas City. Where's a good-looking athlete that Jonathan Hayes out of Iowa? Second-round draft choice three years ago. Big target, big target. That'll do it for the first 15 minutes. The Jets have the lead, but the Kansas City Chiefs are driving. He saw something he did not like, an interference call against one of his safeties. But it doesn't work, Joe, and it went, <laughs> it went for a first down, and now the Chiefs are driving as we're ready to start the second quarter. Coach Bud Carson, the defensive coordinator, also very much involved in the protest. Those protests, Paul, they never seem to work, do they? Not, not even on paper. When you send it into the office on Monday, they still, I think they shred them. <laughs> I don't think anybody ever pays any attention to it. It's done. You can't do anything about it. And the other thing, Joe Walton was at an angle where he couldn't see the arm on the back. We'll check the numbers for the first quarter. Jets with more offense and more time of possession and with more points. 3 nothing. But the Chiefs are in good position now. And they, too, have a tremendous field goal kicker in Nick Lowry who's number two all-time in accuracy for field goals. He was number one for a couple of years, but now Gary Anderson of the Steelers has taken over. First and 10, Kansas City. Oh, yeah. what a load. Homer Smith was telling us before the game about his shoulder dip and how tough that is. Makes tacklers miss it. Worked there. Now let's go to NFL Live. Bob Costas. Bob? All right, Don, Buffalo at Cleveland. Kevin Mack carrying, Cornelius Bennett hits him. He loses the ball. Mark Kelso picks it up, and 57 yards later, he's in the end zone. Buffalo leads 7-3, but the Browns have just scored and added the extra point second to go, and they lead 10-7. Thank you, Bob. We have a down player now for the Jets. Jerry Holmes, a cornerback, shaken up on that run by Akoya. We'll look at that run again. It gets the Chiefs down close. You talk about the dip. You like that shoulder dip? Watch this guy. He gets in the middle of the field, and I tell you, the one man can bring him down. There's just no chance of it. That's Benson got an arm out there, and here comes Holmes to try to cut him his legs out from underneath him. That's the only way you're going to get him down is to cut the legs out. This man is a load. 
They've also done they've done yeah, something a little injury. bit different with uh, So while Jerry Holmes is attended to, there's a break in the action with 14.46 to play in the first half. We'll be back after this. Jerry Holmes is up and should be back. He must have taken a shot in the ribs when he tried to body block tackle Christian Okoya. Pitch back. Running with the ball is Herman Hurd. He's down to the nine-yard line, and the marker goes down and a first and ten carry. Good for three yards. Troy Benson, inside linebacker, who knocked Kurt Warner out of the game twice Monday night, the Seattle runner, made the stop there. Jets are very pleased with 54, and the way he's come out in his second year from Pittsburgh, he was a fifth-round draft choice. We got a holding penalty against Kansas City. This team here, it, you know, you're talking about the record isn't as bad as the last three games that they played that they lost. They just make some stupid mistakes. That along with fumbling the football. As long as they don't turn the ball over, they do well. Against Chicago, they're moving down. They could have beaten the Chicago Bears, fumbled the football. Christian Okoya. Okoya is out of Azusa Pacific. Not many people can say that. If they're out of there, but he's been a fabulous player in college and has come in and leads the AFC in rushing as a rookie. Sire gets time, overthrows again. Sire smacks his hands. He knew he had an open man running free. Paul Kaufman, the longtime tight end, was with the Packers for so many years. Tenured player. He had Paul Kaufman going down the middle, and Sire, that's twice now he's overthrown it. players. He threw overthrew Stefan Page in the first quarter, and, and he knows he's throwing it. But I don't be surprised to see Sire come back and hit Christian Okoya coming out of the backfield because no one covered him last time. Second down coming up. Second and 20. Sire might have been calling a quarterback draw. Did he get stuck? Gastineau. That's the old headache. Well, you, Sire does well to get up after that. Oh. Hit by a truck. I think he called that, Paul. Well, I, I think it was a quarterback draw. What happens when you have a deal and all of a sudden Gastineau, he's coming to the inside. Watch this. They had a deal between the tackle and the end, and Gastineau happened to be in that hole. That's when you call a play that should never have been called into that particular hole and in that particular headache. Get the sack the production dropped off. He has half a sack today, though, does Gastineau, along with Barry Bennett, the other half of the sack of Sire. Now it's third and 25. Draw to Okoya, and he's hauled down in a very fine defensive play by Marty Lyons. The defensive end who stayed home Waiting for a coy and he got him. So a field goal try comes up for Lowry, his first of the game. Tom, they're booing here, but what the Kansas City Chiefs didn't want to do is get themselves out of field goal range. All right, they ran a draw play. With a coy, if he can pop it, he can almost get to the end zone. But this way, they still have Lowry in field goal position to, to make a 40, what, 48 yard kick, 43 yard kick. Sires the holder. Lowry comes in, hitting five of six field goals this season. Very, very accurate. And is again. It spins it through the middle, and the game is tied at 3 all. 12.44 to play in the first half. Now the Chiefs and Jets go back and forth, and all we've had so far is field By goals. Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By McDonald's, it's a good time for the great taste. And by RCA, the most trusted name in electronics. With Paul McGuire, this is Don Crickey at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. We're in the second quarter, 12.44 to play in the half. Chiefs just hit a field goal by Nick Lowry, who's ready to kick it off, and the game is tied 3-all. Report on Jerry Holmes, who went off. Bruised ribs could return in the second half. Knuckleball kick. Gets to have problems with it. Bobby Humphrey picks it up. Will not make it back. 20-yard line as he's thrown back and finally knocked down at the 16. Tim Cofield was the man who made the first strike. 54. One of the fine events in the sport of Kings. The Breeders' Cup is coming up next Saturday on NBC Sports at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Racing's $10 million day. Seven races with a total purse worth $10 million. Set amid the glamour of Hollywood Park. That's next Saturday here on NBC Sports. The Breeders' Cup. 
Jets in tune to the near side, lower right of your screen. Two tight ends in the game, and the lone setback's McNeil, who's run very well. Freeman McNeil does again. What a play. Boy, he's been sensational in this game. Freeman McNeil with the dip and the deep, making tacklers miss, and he's ahead for another 14 or 15-yard game. 18 they give him. Miami jumping all over Indianapolis. That's Eastern Division. Buffalo now behind Cleveland. You got an injured player on the field, Donald. A chief is down with 12-17 to play in the first half. 3-3 tie. Rain has let up somewhat. Looks like Pete Koch might be down. And so while we have a moment, let's go back to NFL Live. Bob? All right, Don, and here's Eric Dickerson's first Indianapolis touchdown. Four-yard run, capping a 77-yard Colt drive at Miami. But earlier, Dan Marino threw a touchdown pass. Lorenzo Hampton had a six-yard scoring run. So it's Dolphins 14, Colts 7. With 12.17 to go, Pete Koch being attended to, the defensive tackle of the Kansas City Chiefs. And that's bad. They're looking at a knee. Look at 74 coming in, and that's Pete Koch, and it's there, and he does. He trips over his own man. That's Deron Cherry, number 20, and twist. It looks like he just twisted his knee going down. When you look at that run of Freeman McNeil, when you look at him in the backfield, what he does, he sets up the blocks. He went to Billy Griggs' side, the tight end, the second tight end of the game, set up the block so Griggs could take Jack Del Rio, number 50, to the inside, and Freeman McNeil just bounces back out to the outside. Look at number 81 right here. He's going to set up, and you're going to see his back in a second. He just takes Jack Del Rio, number 50, right there to the inside. That enables Freeman McNeil to get to the outside. Deron Cherry misses him, and misses costly because it just tears up the leg of Koch, who they're taking off on the truck now. This game is getting sophisticated. We used to play, used to just you know, put a hook inside your lip and just drag you to the sideline. Now they've had two players go off today. Frank Gans losing one of his starting tackles for the moment and the way it looks probably for the game. This is Gans' first year as a head coach after 23 years in football as an assistant. Koch is 74 as the player gets hurt. Now he goes down the line, he throws Mike Bell out of the way, and watch what happens here. Oh, his, yeah, his, own. His, his own man, but when he comes down is when he looked like he turned his knee and twisted it. We just hope it isn't too bad. does very well in the offseason Paul in Hollywood he's one of those heavies in a lot of movies out there my weight I could be heavy yeah <laughs> Eric Holly comes in to replace him number 93 three three game Brian Standing in, boy, he had time, but no receiver, and down he goes to the 28. Jets pass block very well. But O'Brien will take the sack rather than put it up unless he's certain. And as we pointed out, he gets sacked the most, but he also has thrown the fewest interceptions this year. You know, you take you take a look at, at, at O'Brien now. You know, you say, all right, that's good that he takes a sack. But Don, you could throw that ball away out of bounds as long as there is, is a receiver somewhere in the area. And O'Brien had a chance. Jack Del Rio finally gets into him. Holly, number 93, finally gets into him. But there is a time when you throw that ball out. You put yourself in such a bad problem. Now you're looking at second and 16. That's tough. Good point. He has not thrown it away out of bounds. And now it is second and very long. Second and 16. Al Toon running an out pattern. Here's a throw over the middle and a diving catch taken in by Rocky Cleaver. You remember he dropped that ball over the middle right to him. And now he makes a diving reception. Lloyd Burroughs is the man that makes the play. Now watch, he has Cleaver one-on-one. -on -one. There's Lloyd Burroughs on Cleaver. Albert Lewis goes out on Al Toon. They just cross. The pass is perfect. Rocky Cleaver's there, picks up 10. They get 10 back. Now they're looking at third and six. Left knee sprain is the early diagnosis of Pete Koch injury. who just went off. They'll not play again today, though. Ryan looks, stands, 
fires and he has Al Toon coming underneath the zone and Toon is ahead for a first down. Well executed. A 13 yard gain a favorite of the offensive coordinator of the Jets Rich Kotite. Send some deep speed downfield then bring Toon underneath the zone when it backs up. He makes his play work. Watch the time that O'Brien has. Now he has time to throw to fine tune. They're covering man on man on some parts of the field and zone the other way. And all of a sudden, you're going to end up seeing the man that's going to end up on two is going to be Deron Cherry, number 20. But he is so far behind, they just cleared out everything and ran two underneath. Deron Cherry can't make the play. Just to go to that play flicker anytime. Works against Seattle. They ain't going anywhere here, but a sack back at the 45 yard line. Third sack of the game for the Kansas City defense. And I think it's the first time we've seen the, the middle linebacker Dino Hackett blitz from that position in the middle and they ran a deal up the middle and I think what happened O'Brien was trying to hit two real quick coming off the line of scrimmage but Dino Hackett was there it looks like no one even touched him let's just take a look at Hackett here Bingham the center and no one ever blocked him the guards came down to the inside banker came inside and when it opened up the hole here comes Dino Hackett they didn't expect him to blitz. Three, 9.35 to play in the first half. Freeman McNeil again weaves in at the Kansas City defense to the 48-yard line. Bill Moss, one of their best. A tackle from Pittsburgh, number 63, made the stop. A reminder to our viewers that we'll be selecting the Budweiser most valuable player for today's game at the conclusion of the game. The year, Paul, that Ken O'Brien was sacked 72 times. One critic described him as one step faster than a statue. <laughs> but that's not true. He can he showed that against uh, Seattle Monday night. He ran five times, but today he has been willing to take the sack again. Well, they're coming from the outside. It's very difficult for him to get back out around the run. Third, they need 12. Here's the rush, and here's the throw to tune off his hands at the 37-yard line. Evan Ross defending. Ross hasn't practiced all week because of a bad hip, and he's got a load to handle today, and Al Toon is about a foot taller. Well, you see Ross was still holding on to him after the play. Ross figured that he's going to catch the ball with the great hands of Toon. It's man-on-man -man coverage. Watch Kevin Ross on Toon. He's going to break to the outside. Ross comes back up. Now, once he hits him here, he tackles him. He thinks that Toon has the ball. Pleasant surprise for Kevin Ross. One of the best one-on-one -on -one covers in the NFL, in the opinion of a lot of pro scouts. The Raiders haven't made it that way. Dave Jennings in the punt again now. He has very good net punting yards. He's one of the best at getting it out of bounds or placing it high enough not to be returned like that one. He's averaging only 39 yards of punt, but his net average, net yardage is 30. With McGuire here in our office in Kansas City. I didn't know you were that tall. I really didn't. You know, you look short when you're walking. <laughs> At halftime, we'll be hearing from the, our usual partner, Mr. Trump. He's in the studio. A disruptive influence, I'm sure, there. He'll be talking about officiating. And he knows all about it, too. He does. Been studying for a week. Game here is tied 3-3 with 8.42 to play in the first half. Sire, man, what a play, and Jonathan Hayes is on the run over the middle of the field, but there is a yellow flag down, which Mr. Hayes learned about to his dismay. I just wonder if that was an offensive pick. The Jets, they're dropping like flies the last Number 51, couple of weeks. Illegally downfield. Half the distance to the goal line. Still first down. Donnelly, I don't know what the center's thinking about. I mean, it, it, if it is a pass play, you don't go downfield. Sires over the center. Donnelly, take a look at it. Now he's now he's looking downfield. I mean, once he's been on the line of scrimmage, he knows he can't be down that far. He was almost in a pattern. A very nice second look. Our producer today for NBC Sports is David Neal. Our director, Richard Klein. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer of NFL football, Ted Nathanson, as another jet is attended to on the field on this rainy day in Kansas City. That's Carl Howard who's down, and he was called on to start for a, another player who's injured, Russell Carter. They're getting so many injuries on this team, and, and, and you know, people 
you wonder what happens to football teams when, when they get that kind of injuries. It, it just tells you what they have as far as the backup people are concerned. Now, we're looking at a backup player, Carl Howard, who is going off. And now you go down three deep. Like that stool, huh? Good one. We get one of these automatic things. Ejects you here. <laughs> the wrong button. Chiefs in trouble now. Gary Glenn has come in to play the left corner. Gary Holmes, the other starting corner, is also up, so Humphrey's playing there. Okoya tries to get him some room and gets it to the four-yard line. Gary Bennett made the stop. Bennett made an excellent play that time. You know, I, I just want to talk about the corners. You're you know, you lost. There's three corners that you've lost in this game. Right. And it's one of the toughest positions to field on a football team. And now you're looking at Hamilton and Humphrey are now playing the corners. Sire back to Okoya, and again the Jets are looking for 35 all the way, and they knock down this big back, 253 pounds, who is one of the fastest players in the Kansas City team. Joe Klecko and Barry Bennett were on the stop. Klecko making his first start since he was hurt last December. Christian Okoya, Klecko's going to make a play. Bennett's going to be in there. You see Klecko moving down the line of scrimmage. He and Bennett both, and there's just no way. And also, Crable is in there. You're not going to run out of there. You know, sometimes I wonder about teams. You've got a quarterback that can throw the ball. You've got some great wide receivers out there. The score is tied 3-3. You're a 1-7 and seven football team. Throw the ball. I think he could probably hear you. I hope so. It's three to three with 6.40 to play in the first half. Sire stands in, loops it down, Stephon Page. Thank you. Out to the 32-yard line. 27-yard gain, and another underrated player is Stephon Page over the previous two seasons. Number 83 has caught more touchdown passes than any player in the NFL. He's caught 21 TD passes the last two years. Well, just think about it. When you look at the defense, you're missing three cornerbacks. So you're playing third string guys and Stephon Page goes right down the middle of the field. Grable can't stay with him. He's a linebacker. Up beyond the linebackers, in front of the safeties, they pick up a first down. That thin body of Stephon Page was brutalized and some hits by the safeties. Hamilton got a full shot at him, but he held on. So the Chiefs get out of jail. Blecko oh. left early, but Yep, that's part of Joe Klecko's game. He also makes a lot of stops in the backfield. <laughs> well, that was a little Number bit early. 73 defense encroachment. That's Five great... yards, first down. It's great how the officials got that right off the bat, isn't it? <laughs> All right, you're going to see Klecko come across. No, there's no movement anywhere. Klecko's there, and he, you know, just bounces the quarterback just to let him know that even though I did cross, I'm here when I don't cross. I'll be right here in the middle waiting on you. And Joe <laughs> feels bad about it. Puts a first and five. Now it enables the offense to do anything they want. And that could be throw the football here. This drive, you remember, was backed up inside the Kansas City five not long ago. The hit to Stephon Page for 27 was the difference. Here's the play flicker. Nobody's open, though. They're going to call it a sack. He was in the grasp. Marty Lyons was a rushing and so was Barry Bennett. So that's the third sack of young Frank Sire today by the Jet defense. We're going to look at the flea flicker, but I'm going to tell you something right now. I would not run a flea flicker on backup players playing cornerback because, number one, they're off 10 yards already. And they're sitting there waiting. They have to cover Carlos Carson and Stefan Page. So when you go to throw that flea flicker, these guys are already 20 yards downfield. There's just no way to get beyond them. And he had no one to throw the ball to. Three sacks for each team so far, and three points on the board for each team with 5.09 to play in the first half. From the shotgun on second and 18, Kansas City's Frank Sire in his first start for this team. Looking to throw on the run. Now looking to run on the run, and he's cut down way short of the first down. Gets come a hunting. Gary Glenn came up. Also on the play was Kevin MacArthur, number 57. I'll tell you, ever since that lackluster showing against the Colts 
the Jets have been a very spirited together football team. I think defensively, even if you're going back now to the corners, when you're looking at two and three deep in the corners, they're playing disciplined defense, and that's one of the things that you talked to the coaches about before the game. Don, they are not making the mental errors. I mean, sometimes you're going to get beat physically, but if you don't make mental errors, you can keep your defense on the field and do the job. And they've been playing in a continuing downpour. Now it's more of a drizzle, but there's only been one turnover. That was the interception thrown by Sire, who's putting it up again. Nice reception down up to the 38 yard line but on third down the underneath pattern is way short of the first down. Daryl Colbert a first year player makes the catch. Well, I didn't get it. It didn't get deep enough. They're going to have to punt the ball. Good burn punts the ball downfield in the rain coming up on it making a fair catch as Townsell at the 24 yard line and that's where the Jets will go on offense again after that 38 yard punt 340 now to play in the first half who is the greatest running back in NFL history who do you think is Paul well I think it's Gale Sayers I, if, if but I, I don't think that the, you know you don't put Jimmy Brown in with those guys he's a fullback he is the greatest fullback ever. Then you've got Peyton Sarris and Simpson. But I think Gail Sarris, even though he only played a short period of, period of time, if you take a look at what he did, I still think he's the greatest running back ever. You can vote by calling those 900 numbers, and the proceeds will go from NBC Sports to a charity. <laughs> O'Brien buying some time with some footwork, and now he goes down again. And that Chiefs defensive secondary you talked about, Paul, is the best in the NFL, is just not giving up any completions. There's nobody to go to. And that time, the Chiefs secondary, when they were playing man-on-man -man coverage, and they stayed with everybody on the outside. There was just no one to throw to. And, but, uh, but it's disappointing, and I know they're going to catch it in the locker room. Just take a look at the Chiefs defensive line. First of all, you got a couple on the ground, but now O'Brien's running around, and you've got some people standing there, not doing anything. Thank God they have the defensive secondary because he had not one person to throw the ball to. All he could see were red shirts. Kenny O'Brien slow getting up. <laughs> so Ken O'Brien being attended to and we'll have to see it. He's tougher than a boot, O'Brien. I mean, that's another thing about him. He'll stand in and let anybody whack. I'm going to tell you one thing. You made a great point about, you know, you talk about sacks, the most sacks in football, and, and we're going to see Ryan come in and play now. But you take a look at that offensive line, mostly guards and centers, okay? Don, they are blocking very well. When a quarterback runs around and takes a sack, it's credited to the offense, but not necessarily to the offensive line. You've got to credit it to the quarterback. You can get rid of the ball and throw it away, not necessarily on the field, but out of bounds. Colts and Dolphins now tied up, as are the Cowboys and the Patriots. Cleveland extending its lead to 10 points over the Bills at Cleveland. Field goals in those other two games are among the 1 o'clock starts. At halftime, we'll be going to NFL Live to completely update what's transpiring today, including the Rams, who are off to a horrendous 1-7 start, winning at St. Louis. Last time Pat Ryan has been in the Jets lineup was in the replacement game, the strike season game. He crossed the line and threw four TD passes against the Dolphins. So did a lot of other teams. Yeah. Well, Kenny O'Brien is shaken up. He goes out after being sacked. And Pat Ryan, who quartered that the Jets to that wild card win over Kansas City the last time these two teams played last December, now in to run the offense. Three, three games. Shy puts it right up, but not very well. Roger Vick has it. Paul Caraman behind him. Both the Jet quarterbacks with excellent ratings. O'Brien came in with a 94 rating, hitting 67 percent. Pat Ryan with an 89 rating. You know, one thing when you take a look at Ryan coming in a game, why can't football? I mean, the game's going to go long anyway. Cut out the instant replay and give a quarterback. A couple of minutes to warm up to throw some balls when he comes in the game. I know he does before the game, but he stands over there for two hours, doesn't come in. Give him a chance to throw a few balls before you bring him in the game. And off to Freeman McNeil. Waits for his blockers, makes his move, and look at McNeil break it open and get out to the 39 yard line. 
Raymond McNeil, who was benched against Seattle, having one of his best games. That was a 23-yard gain. And you credit the blocking to the offensive line of, of the Jets. Take a look at it. They're pulling the guards. Here comes McNeil. The blocking along the line of scrimmage is terrific. You're seeing three or four of the Kansas City Chiefs people down. Robinson 30 is knocked down. He's on the ground. Joe Fields gets a great block. Freeman McNeil picks up the first down. 95 yards. You'll have 100 by halftime. Marker comes in as the ball carrier is thrown back by Dino Hackett. Nothing there up the middle. Roger Vick hit hard. It'll bring up second down, and if they take the penalty, which they apparently are going to. Oh, wait. As the clock is stopped with 2.22 to play in the first half. Look at where the Jets are gaining their yardage. Sweeps to the outside. Anything from the tackles on out. Offense, number 65. Illegal motion. Five yards, still first down. He had a great block. On, on the run by Freeman McNeil, and now he's in motion. We've got Carl Howard, an update on his report. Mild concussion will return. As you know, Paul, the Jets have no natural tackles in their offensive line. Everybody in there started out as either a guard or a center. Sweeney and Alexander, the tackles. Alexander is a tremendous guard and doesn't like to play tackle, but has been doing it well. Bankroom fields the guards and being in the center. Kirk Sohn turns up field on a first and 15 reception, and he gets back about 13 of the yards. As the clock is now down to the two-minute warning here in Kansas City, the rain continues to fall, and the score remains. The Jets three, the Chiefs three. All that coming up at halftime, as well as the scores and the big plays here. As O'Brien throws and connects with tight end Rocky Cleaver on second and short. He's going to be just short of the first down as the Jets quickly align now without a huddle. Going into their two-minute offense with the clock running and down to 145 to play in the first half. Now you got Moss down. Bill he Moss was, is down. That's two tackles in the game. He was shaken up before Paul, appeared to have injured a knee and went back in. So a lot of the top players are going down in this game, and while Moss is attended to, we'll take this break. Bill Moss, one of the best who has been a nose tackle in the past in the 3-4, now a defensive tackle in the newly aligned 4-3 defense with a very tender left knee. Comes off the field. 1.43 to play in the first half. Don Crickey with Paul McGuire in Kansas City with the rain now begins to fall a bit harder in this 3-3 game. Third and less than one. O'Brien play faking. Myers and he's almost picked off. So the Jets gamble on third down of the 49. Let's see if they go for it now with fourth and one coming up. Cleaver was the antenna receiver and Hackett broke it up. It's a lot of confidence in a, in a middle linebacker to put a middle linebacker on a tight end like Cleaver. What would you do here? You kick the ball away is what you do. Because if you make a mistake here, you're giving Kansas City a uh, great field position and you don't want to do that. I like that. the way you call that as Jennings sprinted out. Oh. There he is. <laughs> it's amazing. You know, I just look for number four. How about a fake? There's Clemens, the rookie returner for KC. Well, the Jets gambled. Third and one. They went to the throw. Didn't hit it. Now they go to the punt. Hoping the Chiefs might jump. They did not. So they'll set the Jets back five yards for delay of game. First of all, the Jets didn't have enough people on, on the field. Lester Lyles, I don't know if he's supposed to be there. But he came in and lined up at the defensive, as there at the offensive tackle position, and I don't know if he's supposed to be there. Ken O'Brien, part of that celebrated quarterback class of '83, the only unhappy story to come out of that from a performance standpoint is Todd Blackledge, who was down the bench here in KC, demoted to third string, and he was the second QB pick that year in the first round. Elway was the first. Dave Jennings will hit the ball at about his 33-yard line as Michael Clemens is back at his 15. High knuckleball into the wind and rain, and Clemens doesn't want any part of it. Now he takes it on the one hop. Got a perfect hop, a room service hop, and takes it out to the 28-yard line. Report on Bill Moss now from the sideline, an ankle injury. Sprained ankle. They've taken him to the locker room. They'll retape it, and he'll possibly play in the second half. Now, Kansas City still, they have three timeouts. They're in very good field position for the for your two-minute drill. they got a minute and 29 seconds. Go ahead and fire away. You've got great receivers out there. And again, 
you've got a defensive secondary that, that's patched together. Sire may be ready to pitch now on first and ten. He's not going to get that away. Joe Klecko up the middle like a rhino, busting through all the blockers. And Joe Klecko shows his all pro form of so many years. Now you run the ball. Joe Klecko, watch the jump he gets. Donnelly is the center. He just goes between Attics and Donnelly, 51 and 61. They didn't even slow him down. Joe Klecko for the sack. Great play. Joe was rehabbing Paul. The Jets were telling us twice a day coming back and he said one day I just wish I could have a hammer and fix this thing. I, I don't know if I've ever met in 27 years associated pro football anyone more dedicated than Klecko. Chiefs over the run little Michael Clemens weaves is where Paul Palmer weaves his way across the 25 to the 27 yard line the game clock down as you see inside 50 seconds to play in the half. Apparently the Chiefs are just going to take the tie and go to the locker room. Do we check the scoreboard again? I don't understand this. Well, it's starting to rain a little bit harder. Oh, Washington coming back. <laughs> I just threw that in. I know that's where you always wanted to live was in Washington, D.C. Is that one of your picks? No, I didn't pick them. I didn't have any picks today. They had running backs today. Koya busts it out to the 35-yard line, but a bit late as the game clock's going to wind out here in the first half. They're Frank Gans hearing some boos for not trying, but he's electing from deep in his own end to play percentages, not put the ball up and let the Jets get a crack at it. And so the first half runs out. They go to the locker room in a standoff, a 3-3 tie. Yet field goal kicker Pat Leahy was one for two. Nick Lowry of Kansas City was one for one. Nobody was really close to a touchdown in this game as the defenses have stood tall and a lot of starting players have gone down so far, Paul. I think that's that's the secret when you go back in at halftime and you try to figure out who you're going to play. Nick Lowry. This kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. Rain falling hard now in Kansas City. It's rained since the outset. 70 degrees and sunny here yesterday, but there's a big storm front moving in across the plains. This is going to turn to snow and cold very shortly as Bobby Humphrey runs it back for the Jets. And Humphrey, one of the smallest players out there, weaves his way, but there is a marker down and a 29-yard return. Cofield, a linebacker, made the stop for Kansas City. That's two in a row for Cofield. Holding on the run back, number 81, the illegal block in the back, above the waist, 10 yards. It'll be first down. In the back, above the waist, from behind. All of it illegal. <laughs> yeah, okay. Bobby Humphrey. And you got you know, you gotta see the guy. Can we see it? There's the, there is a block from behind. There, that's one. And Cofield makes a stop, but I didn't see the other one. And that football is going to be loose pretty soon, one way or the other. It's just too wet. Rain really pouring now as the Jets go right back to the man who's really propelled their offense today, Freeman McNeil, who is now in his seventh year from UCLA, has never played a full NFL season because of injuries, never has gone the full 16 games, but he's had some phenomenal years from an overall yardage standpoint. Second and five. Look at this rain coming down, and I, I guarantee you, and it's going to get worse and worse the way that, that the clouds are showing, Don, and I, I think we're going to see the ball turned over a lot more. Only one turnover in the first half. That's phenomenal. Pitch back to Freeman McNeil, who's at 100 yards now for the game. Didn't get much there. On a second down and four play, he did well to get back across the line of scrimmage. McNeil now officially over 100 for the day as Leonard Griffin made the tackle of defensive end number 98. He's moved into the inside now. Hits. Leonard Griffin replacing injured Bill Moss, who has not returned here in the third quarter. We've got Koch, and to bring you up to date, we've got Koch, one tackle, Moss, the other tackle for Kansas City. Defensive tackles, both out of the game with injuries. They're down to four defensive linemen right now, and they play the 4-3. 
Third and two. O'Brien stands in against the rush. Bell's coming hard to throw and a drop ball. The defense was there. Blygen had it on his hands, but he might have been stripped of it by Lloyd Burris, who last season as a Pro Bowl safety scored four touchdowns, ran back three interceptions, and also a fumble recovery. Probably one of the toughest guys on the defense in the secondary, and Burris is right there. Did not put his hand on him. Gets his hand in front, knocks the ball away. The pass was on target. We're just told that Bill Moss is out for the game with an injured ankle for Kansas City. One of their best players on defense. Jennings hits it downfield. Clemens is hit before the ball got there. And we'll have to see how this is sorted out. Michael Clemens came flying up the rookie to catch it on the run. Sherman yeah. Cocroft gets it. Couple of guys down, including Marion Barber of the Jets. I'll tell you, the way the Jets have been losing players, and it isn't funny, but the way, that, you know, they, they're going to have to hire there some isn't. extra team doctors. I mean, they're, they're really getting paid to do a job. <laughs> they got a big job ahead of them. So the great story they tell about Weeb, year after year, one season or player after player was going out. Doctor came in with the X-rays proving another one had to go, and we've asked him if he could touch up the X-rays. Clemens, first of all, I don't know why he even thought about feeling this ball in the rain, the way the rain's coming down, but he gets knocked off by his own man. You see Sherman Cocroft, number 22, thinking, and it's a smart move, thinking that, that maybe they did touch the ball. He's going to make sure it stays in the hands of Kansas City. So while uh, Marion Barber is attended to, we see the Dolphins have taken a lead over Indianapolis, 21 to 17. Dallas up on favor, New England at Foxborough. Cleveland and Buffalo at halftime with the Browns in the lead. Steelers in Houston, not a lot happening at Pittsburgh. And Washington has come back now to take a commanding lead over Detroit. That Miami game still in the second quarter. That may go till 7 o'clock tonight. We have 13-23 to play in the third quarter here at Kansas City. Chiefs with their first possession of the second half. Sire moving pocket, fires on the run, and throws a spike at the 45-yard line of the Jets. 14-yard gain on the play. We welcome those of you who have been watching Pittsburgh and Houston. Understand there have been some technical problems. Stadium power went out, so they've switched to, to Kansas City. This is Don Crickey with Paul McGuire as the Jets and the Chiefs early in the third quarter are... Locked up at three all. But that game's locked up too, three all. So they, you know, someone might have gotten bored with it, and cut the cord. <laughs> Chiefs on the first down throw by Sawyer in the rain, and Dyer's ready now on a first and ten play with a lone setback, ready to put it up again. Throw and a catch is again Carlos Carson with those very quick moves takes a defender deep and then cuts back and is wide open for a perfectly thrown ball. I, I just like throwing the ball in the rain. I think the quarterback knows where the receiver's going. The receiver knows where he's going, the defensive back, and that field gets a little slippery. You know, I sit here and I look at Joe Klecko line up, and there is such a thing as a neutral zone, isn't there? Supposed to be. Well, I know that his head is beyond the center head of Kansas City. He does not give an inch. Look at Klecko. You can see him getting down on the ball, and he'll start leaning. Look at this. They're all, now, is he almost beyond it or what? That's amazing. Oh, yeah. See, they run the opposite way of the gap that Fleck goes in, but that is a great observation. The I mean, way he leans in and then has that super quick start. He is. He's across the line before the, before the uh, center can get to him, and fortunately, that time, the play was called to the inside, and when he lines up in a gap like that, it's not too difficult for the center just to let him have that gap and go to the other side of him. But he, uh, you talk about crowding the line. He crowds the line. Here he comes again. Look at this. Look at his foot is. His foot is, was beyond the ball. Now he starts to lean. <laughs> He's over the ball. There he is. And off he goes, but they put a good block on him. Donnelly, the center, takes him out. Barry Bennett combines on the stop. He pushed Klecko right towards the runner. I thought there was a neutral zone in there. Now, on this angle here, it's very difficult, but Klecko was lined up to the right shoulder of Donnelly. Just beat him around to the other side and ended up over by the play. That's quickness. 
Pouring rain in Kansas City. 11 minutes and 15 seconds to play in the third quarter. A 3-3 game as it stood at the half. Stefan Page, very dangerous, wide at the top of your screen against Kyle Howard. Starting because of an injury to Russell Carter, and Howard's playing way off him. Here's Sire looking, close to Stefan Page, who drops the ball. He had Howard beaten over the middle, but couldn't hold on. He looked, he looked to run, Don, before he got the football, because that ball was there. Take a look at where the ball's thrown. Stephon Page is coming across. All he needs is three yards. Watch his head. He's already looking the other way. Did not look the ball into his hands. Field goal time. Lowry, as you see, one for one for the day and six for, six for seven for the season. it in uh, left upright and Lowry's good again and the Kansas City Chiefs despite a seven game losing streak are the favorite here today by a field goal and they lead by that margin six to three we'll be back with Lowry's kickoff Others are with us in Kansas City they are still playing and it's still three three in the third quarter it is six to three here in Kansas City Chiefs just broke the tie and Nick Lowry's second field goal of the day and now it is a torrent of rain falling here at Arrowhead Lowry's ready to kick it off. Bobby Humphrey and JoJo Townsell are back deep for the Jets. High kick coming down in the rain, and Humphrey takes it. Here come the red-shirted hitters trying to knock it free. They don't get Humphrey to lead back to the 28-yard line. Mark Robinson, a former Penn State secondary player, made the stop for the Chiefs as Bobby Humphrey, who led the NFL in kickoff returns one year, brings it back nicely again to give O'Brien and the Jets first and ten. It's the power in the entire stadium that went out, not just NBC's power at Three Rivers Stadium in Pittsburgh. The updating you as that game develops. Here is O'Brien throwing. And somehow, Rocky Cleaver comes down with the ball. That was one of the all-time strange patterns I, I think I've seen in a long time. Don, all three receivers went out and hooked at four yards and then drifted towards the middle. O'Brien was lucky to just get the ball into somebody's hands. That early drop ball, Cleveland's been making some big plays. That was sure, surely one, as now Freeman McNeil on second down and five runs the ball across the 35-yard line where Mike Bell knocked him down. You know, we talked about it at halftime. In the first half, Freeman McNeil and the New York Jets ran wide against Kansas City. So far in the second half, they have not. They, they ran one off tackle play that did, didn't gain anything. And then this time here, it was another play that I think that was supposed to go wide, but it was turned in by Art Still. Freeman McNeil came back and picked up three yards on the play. On his own. Jets with third and short. They've converted just three of nine previous third downs. New Paola runs him. It's all up to the linesman now. Comes in to make the spot. And to get across the 38 and dead. New Paola. You know, I watched Paola come on the field. First down. Don at the, on the kickoff return team, and he was limping. He still is limping. It, but look at just the power. He just hits in there and, and picks it up basically on his own. That's Burroughs in there, number 34. Lloyd Burroughs. And, and, and the guy is limping. You know, they're really down to some, some strange people in the game. You know, the guys, and they're giving their all. Limping it all. He's delivered, and now the Jets keep the drive alive. Ryan looks, dumps it over the middle to Roger Vick, the rookie fullback, and he piles ahead and gets a gain of about 10 yards where they finally get him. Only took six guys to bring <laughs> Roger Vick down. <laughs> O'Brien was trying to throw a quick, quick hookup to uh, Al Toon out on the left, and he couldn't find him. And then Vick, we watch right here, he tries it. No, nobody open. So Vick just slides in, catches the ball. Now watch where he is. Now that's one yard. Two, three, four. Wait a minute. Five. I think somebody's helping the ball carrier too. And a total of six more yards after he gets hit. Yeah. 
McNeil again slants in and breaks tackles in Freeman McNeil, who could be on his way to a, if not a career day, certainly one of the best of his careers, gains 13 yards. You got to say a lot for this offensive line blocking. They are doing a great job. Look at now, he's following Vic in. Now, even though Vic really doesn't get a great block, all he does is open the hole. And when Freeman can go behind that wall, see a white shirt in front of him, he follows it till he sees daylight and then breaks it. 122 yards so far, that's bad. In 16 carries. About eight yards per. Here is uh, O'Brien on the run into open field. For the moment, he laterals to McNeil. It's a clean play, it'll go. No flags are down, and Freeman McNeil is down to the five-yard line. So a little bit of spur-of-the-moment option play by Ken O'Brien, who just looked back, and there was Freeman. The pitch back was clean. It's a 32-yard gain. What a tremendous heads-up play by O'Brien. I mean, he is sacked. Trying to hit l tune deep, and he can't jump. Jack Del Rio runs by him, and, and all of a sudden, just as he's going down, and it was a clean play. It was a lateral. And Freeman McNeil, he, the old Walter Payton movies, huh? That was a lateral, so it's a run from scrimmage for Freeman McNeil as he now goes over 150 yards for the day. O'Brien looks and wisely throws it away as the coverage was very good on Billy Griggs. Dolphins lead just a point at halftime over Indianapolis as they kicked a field goal to the Colts before halftime. Dallas now up on New England by seven in the third quarter, and Cleveland extends its lead over Buffalo. Houston and Pittsburgh, those of you, we remind you again, who were watching that game, the switch was made to this game at Kansas City because all the power went off at Three River Stadium. The Emmys don't work when there's no power. Gets challenging. They trail 6-3 to three in the third quarter. Rain falling. Here's Freeman McNeil. They get him for a loss at the 7-yard line. Mike Bell, what a great play. He just got off his block and got to the outside. But Jim Sweeney, I think, is a man that's supposed to be blocking Bell. And watch Bell. He just gets away. Not only and that, and he knocks off Banker, the guard, coming out to the outside and makes the play. Or Joe Fields, excuse me, what backer? Joe Fields, number 65, not 63. Banker appreciates the mention. Well, I, got, I got him on a replay at halftime. <laughs> Second and goal from the six-yard line for the Jets. O'Brien timing pattern, and Wu is a little bit short. Here is O'Brien screaming for an official call. Townsell on a delayed route. And Al Toon might have been knocked down coming off the line of scrimmage. Well, he comes down, he comes inside, and they're going to get JoJo Tonzella to go outside. Now watch, he was supposed to clear out. They run into each other. That is a clean play. The only thing that happened is Albert Lewis, 29, pushed two into JoJo Tonzella, which is legal, and you're allowed that hand chuck. Knock both players off. There's no interference. So the jet drive team to arrange a thorough test drive on your nearest BMW dealer by the makers of new Prestone Advanced Formula, the antifreeze that guarantees your radiator. And by Coors Light, the silver bullet. There's no slowing down with a silver bullet. And a reminder, one of the great events in golf is coming up over the Thanksgiving weekend, the Skins game. We'll tell you more about that in a moment as right now the kickoff is downfield of Paul Palmer from the 13-yard line. Straight ahead goes Palmer, and he is out to the 30 as markers come in. A unique event. Jack Nicholas, Lee Trevino, Arnold Palmer, and last year's champion Fuzzy Zeller shoot it out again for $450,000. Saturday and Sunday on uh, Thanksgiving weekend, only on NBC Sports, it's the Skins game. Those $100,000 putts will give you the yips. <laughs> no, you got to understand something. That's not your money. It's not so hard to put a putt. If you, if you lose it, it wasn't yours in the first place. Not that hard to do. It's when a guy here gets fined or cut. Now they have no money coming in because they're under contract. Those guys aren't under contract. I could make that. Hit, it, right. be, hit it between yips, yeah. huh? <laughs>
First and ten for Sire in a heavy rain. He goes to Jonathan Hayes again. Another beautiful throw-catch combination. The young quarterback and the young tight end. Sire in his second year from Kansas. Hayes in his third year from Iowa. This ball is put right on the money. Fakes to Herman Hurt and take a look at Sire. Why don't you just drop this ball over the linebacker, right into the tight end's arm. Concentration. Safety never got over. I'll tell you another thing they can do. If they forget about the play action passes and just throw on the top side. Either Stefan Page or Carlos Carson or number 80, 81, Colbert. The, safe, the corners are off 10 yards. Sire wants some more. Another man is open, but he's way too high. Going to the rookie, Daryl Colbert. Game clock down to 4.49 to play in the third quarter. What? Look, look where Colbert's out there, and look where the defender is. He's 10 yards off. Now they start closing, so the defender leaves. When he throws the ball, or he throws it high. He could have almost walked out and handed it to him. They're playing so far off. They really are. Way off. Kyle Howard, a fourth-year corner from Rutgers, playing at the right side and replacing Russell Carter, who's injured today. Left side corner is Kerry Glenn. He's playing way off. He's in for injured Jerry Holmes, who's hurt in the first half. Here comes Akoya. Rama Bull on the run. They gave him some new pads today. Look at his arm. You see that arm right there? That's an elbow pad or, or a, a forearm pad, but on the inside, it's it's like a, a textured thing so that he wouldn't fumble the ball. They're reminding him that he fumbles. All right, here's Klecko lined up. Donnelly, Attics are there. Donnelly just lets Klecko do what he wants to do at the line of scrimmage. He just waits and holds on to him. That was a nice tackle by Donnelly on Klecko. gives Pleco a shot when it's all over and now it's going to be first and ten and here comes Sire on the sprint out swings it out to Jonathan Hayes on the run he's inside the 20 and down to the 14 yard line 19 yard gain gotta love the Chiefs to stay today with a one and seven record and a heavy rain you got Jonathan Hayes lined up and they sprint out to his side now you're looking at Clifton number 59 is trying to stay with him you got the linebacker on the tight end he can't get there Hayes turns up. Now watch Carlos Carson, 88. All he's trying to do is help out and doesn't do that. He lets his man block, but he, if, if he would have blocked him, he would have clipped him. So Frank Sire making his first start for Kansas City, throwing well in the rain here in the third quarter, 3.23 to play in it. Game is tied, 6 all. We've had only field goals so far. Now a timeout is called, and so while Sire comes over to the sideline for counsel, they don't want to let this golden opportunity. Yesterday it was 70 degrees and sunny in Kansas City. Now it, the temperature is dropping as a big western storm front moves in. Heavy rain, heaviest it's been all day, and it's rained from the outset. As the Chiefs in this tie game in the third quarter, threatening pitchback goes, and Paul Palmer's going to throw it. Coverage is there, and the Jets can't intercept, but they break up the play. So they go to the rookie Paul Palmer to throw it in the rain and he doesn't do it very well and who would in this weather. He was trying to throw the ball to Carlos Carson but Kerry Glenn just did not give up. You're going to when Carlos Carson comes out watch it he's looking like he's going to block him watch Kerry Glenn he stays right with him he's allowed to check stays there there's just no place to throw the ball. Palmer's lucky he got away with this thing if you, if you see it covered throw it away. Now we'll look at Joe Klecko again on Donnelly. The blocking is there at the line of scrimmage. He gets away from Donnelly. The force is on. But Palmer has enough time to get rid of the ball. Should have never thrown. You don't throw that pass on a, on a, in a rainy day. Well, he's a runner, though. He led the nation in rushing in an all-purpose yardage last season at Temple. Then run the ball. Klecko a coming, and they go to a draw. And right by Joe Klecko goes Akoya, but the marker comes in also. I didn't think he could get hurt. He can it's offside. They finally, I think they finally got Klecko. I mean, he's, he's always offside. They give you so much leeway. Don't wait till they get all the way down here to throw the flag. Throw it in the middle of the field when you're doing it at the beginning. Defense, number 73, offside. Five yards, still second down. All right, what I'm saying, he's been doing it the entire game, Don. Don't wait till they're on a drive towards the end zone to make that call. Make it when it should have been made a long time ago. When you're doing the encroachment at the beginning, call them then. Don't let them get away with it. Get all the way down by the end zone and say, okay, now we're going to throw a flag on you. 
Well, throw it they did, and the ball is advanced to the 10 yard line. Second down and five for the first down, second and 10 for the touchdown. Up the middle, running hard is Larry Moriarty, and he crashes down to the five yard line. Kansas City with 86 yards rushing in the game, the Jets with 160. And virtually all of it to Freeman McNeil. He's had a spectacular day. Watch, watch the hole open up in the middle. They just cross block with the two guards and Moriarty at the end. Watch what he does. He gets up. Get off me. Get away from me. They start to smell bad at this time of the game, man. You don't want those guys hanging all over you. <laughs> they do. Game clock down to 205 and running in the third quarter. Oh, Sire, open man, Moriarty drops the ball. <laughs> Larry Moriarty, who was a Houston Oiler, a fifth-year fullback from Notre Dame, had it and lost it. Herman Hurd tries to block Alex Gordon. Watch number 55 come through. Watch Hurd. Bonk. He, hit him and he just ran right on through him. Hurd went down like, what was that? And he hit Moriarty right in the hands. Watch this, Herman. Here comes Herman. He said, I got to get this linebacker. And I got him. No, I you don't got have me. <laughs> I, got, I got a headache. Now it is second down and the ball inside the five yard line. Pitch back, oh. free ball, and Herman Hurt picks it up <laughs> on the one hop, goes to the two. Another trick play. We saw Pat Leahy bouncing off the upright for a field goal. Almost double dribble. Almost double dribble on that play. How can that ball? You run a toss down here in the rain. That could have gone the other way, oh, too. Oh, sure. Watch this ball hit the turf and come right back into his hands. Hello. It's heads up football by Hurt, but I didn't like the call. Report from the Chiefs. Sequoia has a jammed left toe. He is expected back, though. Big down now. Third down and goal from the two-yard line. High game, 6-6 six, six in the third quarter. Heard, got close, did not get in. Go for it. You're one. You got a one and seven record. Go for that's it. What the fans are saying, Paul? They're going to kick a field that's goal. That's what Frank Gans is saying. He flips off the hood of his rain jacket, yeah. fires a fist out. Get in the end zone if you can. You're one and seven. You're not going anywhere. Seven points in this rain. Yeah, yeah. Almost give you a lock on the game. What is it, Koya? Bad toe? Bad toe. He's got nine other ones. He's got nine other ones. He'll, they'll be able to work. Lowry, as you see, has been perfect, and this one is a chip shot, actually shorter than an extra point. Minus scrimmage is the one. Up and good. <laughs> 31 seconds to play in the third quarter. Chiefs get points but draw booze as they take a field goal instead of going for it, but they do take a three-point lead. Today's small Back at Kansas City is now 9-6 Chiefs. Coach McGuire lobbied hard to go for it in fourth down. Well, think about it. You're one and seven. The leader in your division, San Diego, seven and one. You're not going anywhere. People are sitting in this rain. They didn't come here to watch field goals be kicked all day long. Let's get on, get on with it. You're a half a yard from the goal line. If you score a touchdown, you've been holding the What Jets. if you don't get in? Doesn't make any difference. The Jets are on the half yard line. You've been holding them anyway. Let's get on with the game. Play. Score a touchdown. So I want to see some touchdowns. <laughs> well, right now the Jets are going to try. Freeman McNeil's been sensational. You see the point scored. Oh, the Rams are the mighty have fallen there, although they're doing all right at St. Louis. Kick to an up back. Marion Barber runs it back, so the Jets will start out with good field position. Oh. They're still booing here, you know. They can't be booing this defense, which has held the Jets to two field goals. And there's actually a kicker Nick Lowry's house that Frank Gans got the job. Gans quit and said he was going elsewhere. Lamar Hunt and some players met at Lowry's house, and then all of a sudden John Makovic was out here in Kansas City. It's really been a soap opera scenario. The way he was yelling at Lowry's not going to be at his house tonight. Well, he might be. Field goal holds up. Here is Roger Vick turning the corner, and look at him running hard and down the sideline. Goes the big back from AM, who has struggled since the strike, but has a 13 yard gain there. Game clock down to 20 seconds to play in the third quarter. Uh, 
I don't. I well, I'm leaving it alone now. It's over. What's that? Not going for it on fourth down. Yeah, I mean, you sure because if you take a look at the Jets kicker, Leahy is an excellent kicker. Right. Brian is 10 of 18 throwing the ball for 98 yards today. Back to Roger Vick they go. O'Brien's been sacked four times, and while the defense keys on Freeman McNeil, O'Brien goes to little use Roger Vick. And now you go back to Freeman. We got another injured player, Kansas City, down. One of the linebackers is down. Looks like it might be Hackett. As Coach Walton checks the clock and watches it tick on down to six seconds. Stopped by the injury. The actual attendance we're given today is 40,000 and change. How about the change? 167. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the change. I mean, that's close to what's here. <laughs> Coach Gans, I'll tell you. Here comes Dino Hackett. He, can, it, he just hit him with his shoulder, and that's what he's holding on to is his shoulder. enough hospital space in this town for this game. A lot of top players have gone down for both sides. Now Dino's up. He's the leading tackler for Kansas City. I I'll tell you what. This guy is so tough. Boy, is he. He hurt his neck in the Chicago game and missed a play. If he misses more than one or two plays on the outset, I'll really be surprised. He said he's all right. He's putting his chin strap back on. He's Property of the National Football League of the Kansas City Chiefs and the New York Jets all rights are reserved. As the Jets go to the run, McNeil takes it straight ahead on second and six. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Kansas City Chiefs and the National Football League is prohibited. Raymond McNeil over 150 yards rushing on the day for the Jets in less than 20 carries. was on his way back in so he's fine only a sprained neck yeah, only got one of those sideline swing pass very nicely done by Dennis Blygen a heart catch boy that's not easy going into the teeth of the defense linebacker Aaron Pearson coming up to blast him Dennis Blygen who played at St. John's makes a big play for the Jets and gets them a first down Aaron Pearson was there so was J.C. Pearson and it you're right. When you know you're going to get hit, and all of a sudden that ball comes out there, and you go ahead, you're going to get hit anyway, so you might as well catch the football. But look where that ball was placed, right where he could catch it. Preston Pearson, the only Pearson who wasn't there. <laughs> and off goes to Freeman McNeil on a first down run. He has such a remarkable ability to shift gears and accelerate, and he runs so low. He's 5'11, 212 pounds, Freeman McNeil. There's Dino. He's back. Takes the fake to the outside, comes back to the inside, doesn't make the tackle, or it still does, but he's in on the play. Aggressive player. McNeil's I still numbers. I still, 156 yards, 19 carries for McNeil. Still don't understand that kickoff. I don't understand that kickoff. I think he mishit the ball. No, he didn't. It was he did it on purpose. Well, he thought it was a good idea at the time. <laughs> Look at McNeil. He's been unbelievable. In 1985, Freeman McNeil in one game rushed for 192 yards. In another game that same year, he rushed for 175. This is his second best career game, but by day's end, we've got a long way to go. 12:44 to play in the game. This might be a career game for a standout player. He's over, what, 165 now. That's beautiful. And 20 carries. That's eight yards, right? Eight yards a pop. Math, man. I did a lot of math. McNeil again stutter stepping shooting into the gap gets a couple first down carry all right Don we're going to take a look at that at that uh, kickoff now look he doesn't miss this ball watch Lowry's leg he's just trying to punch the ball up in the air for an onside kick get the players down when he came off we showed you Frank Gans chewing his ear off obviously Lowry missed the cue and Gans will look at him and say hey wait a minute. I said Kick the ball. Look at Lowry's hands going up and down. He must have had a momentary sinking spell, Lowry, because there was nobody running down to cover it. Lygen, both arms on the ball, runs well on a second down and eight play. He's inside the 20 and down to the 17-yard line where he's tackled by Dino Hackett. 
Nine to six. Kansas City leads with 11.35 to play in the game. I still, I got to go back to that touchdown, my friend. You've been going back. Well, yeah, even, even if they, they wouldn't, you said, what happens if they didn't make it? It changes the entire game plan of the Jets because you're on the half yard line coming out. Your entire team is lined up in the end zone. You've got to be very careful on everything you do. But they kicked it and they lead. Altoon is open. He has the ball and dances in for a touchdown. O'Brien waiting, waiting for the last possible second for Toon to break free and then arcing the ball high and Toon who has a vertical jump almost like Michael Jordan's of NBA fame. He's got a 43 inch vertical leap. Use some of that to get up and get the ball and then lose a tackler and go in as the Jets take the lead for the first time today, 12 to 9. Evan Ross, number 31, is on him. Watch Toon. He pushes him aside and goes for the play. What a great call, though. And watch Ross. He goes down. Toon just steps in the end zone. But they've been running the ball, running the ball, running the ball. Little play action, touchdown. Extra point, most important. It'll give the Jets a four point lead if good, and Kansas City will have to score a touchdown, something they've not done today. So the Jets come down the field with a very impressive drive keyed by Freeman McNeil's running, and then the payoff throw. Kenny O'Brien lofting the ball to L2, and it's now a 13 to 9 game as the Jets get set to kick it back. Today's game is brought to you by MasterCard. Every time you choose MasterCard to make a purchase, we'll make a contribution to one of six worthy causes. By Mazda, bringing performance and value together, that's the Mazda way. And by AT&T, the right choice. So the Jets just went down the field, 63 yards in nine plays, the last 18, O'Brien to tune, and now the Chiefs, down by four, run it back. Paul Palmer, the spectacular rookie, takes it back to the 24-yard line. He's the best in the league in a yardage per, per return average, 24.5. Miami holds to a one-point lead over the Colts at the new Joe Robbie Stadium. Dallas continues to lead New England. Cleveland in command of Buffalo. Houston is tough. They're going to go to 6-3 and three if they continue, leading Pittsburgh right now 17-3. <laughs> We've got another injured player on the field for the Jets. Power seemed to go off in the Steelers also. Matt Monger, backup linebacker and a special team standout, is down for the Jets with 10.56 to play in the game. I, I, you know, I watched that Monday night game. The Jets lost a, a bunch of players in that game. You know, they're not a lot of... Every injury is a bad injury, but not real, you know, serious injuries. The Jets are just losing so many players. And, you know, you, you, you want to think back, you know, with that layoff during the replacement game, where these guys were so tuned, getting ready to go, they played two games on, all of a sudden, a month off, and now coming back again to try and get that tuning back again. And it's unbelievable that the, uh, the number of players in the National Football League growing down. Voting will continue on your choices for the best back until 4 o'clock. Results in the postgame show. The 50% call charge goes to charity. Swing pass goes out. Jonathan Hayes, who's caught a bunch today, gets out for a first down. Gets her staying off him. Alex Gordon brings him down, but 13 yards downfield. Same play. They ran the first play of the game. They fake the toss. Jonathan Hayes is out on the linebacker. Alex Gordon, he just gets off of him. Down, picks up a first down, gets out of bounds, and stops the clock. There's 10.48 remaining, but the exact same play that they ran on the first play of the game. Look at that. Jonathan Hayes goes over 100 yards. First time a chief tight end has done that since 1982. Al Dixon did it that year, and now Paul Palmer runs wide. Cuts back, gets get him, they lose him, and here comes Palmer across the 50. We have a moment to NFL Live. Here's Bob. All right, Don, in the fourth quarter at Three Rivers, Houston lengthens its lead over the Steelers on this beautiful pass of 42 yards from Warren Moon to Drew Hill. 17-3 Oilers early in the fourth now. Oilers are tough in a lot of lean years in Houston. The good news earlier in the season was that the Oilers were going to stay in Houston. 
better news for Oilers fans might be they look like a playoff team. Thirteen nine Jets lead Kansas City has the ball first and ten. Akoya taking on tacklers is thrown back. He got ahead for a gain of only a yard. We've been featuring this big back from Azuba Pacific. See those things on his arms? Those are forearm pads, but on the inside, it's, it's not Velcro, but it's it's a kind of a, a material that doesn't feel like skin, and even with water on it, it, it doesn't sweat and hold on to the football. They keep reminding him about his fumbling. He didn't he hadn't fumbled yet. Uh oh. Uh oh. He hasn't coughed it up today. They had the Bears beaten and he lost it at Chicago. Had the Steelers beaten and he lost it last week. There's a quiet hobbling the ball man taken off. All right. Gary Glenn shows a lot of heart meets him head on. It was Koya who bounced back but he rushed ahead for a first down. Now they're going to spot it out of bounds for a nine yard game. It's just this is a great catch. The blitz is on. Watch Klecko, number 73 up the middle. Beats off Donnelly and Attics. McCoy waits, gets the football. Now we're going to see the collision. Right here. Wing. Well, I'll tell you what. Kerry Glenn won. He won that. The 35s beat head on with 9.08 to play in the game. 13-9. Jets lead for the first time after that sustained drive, culminating with a touchdown throw. O'Brien to two and 18 yards out. Akoya loses a tackler, then takes out a couple more and gets ahead on a third and a yard play. He's got a first down for Kansas City. They've got to take it in. A field goal would only bring them within one. Kevin MacArthur, MacArthur doesn't think so, number 57, but what's the nice move of Akoya? He goes into the line, knows there's nothing there, a little side step back to the left, MacArthur's there to make the tackle, and he drags him for the yard. MacArthur thinks that he should have been stopped right at that point. 57 white on 35 red. Right here. Nice hit, except the Koya breaks it to the left a little bit and makes the play. Koya with 58 yards on 13 carries. Play fake by Sawyer. And he's going to be sacked by Marty Lyons. The fifth sack of the day for the Jet defense. Big Marty coming off some shoulder problems, looking in great form today. He's been in on two of the sacks. Uh, you get, you just can't, you know, let people run free. And, and Marty Lyons, what a great job that time because Sire had a wide receiver open on that play. And just take a look at it. But isn't if, if Marty Lyons right here doesn't get to him? And that's Dave Lutz, number 72, who lets him go by him. There might have been a completion downfield, but a great play by Marty Lyons. That sets the Chiefs way back. Second down and 21 as Sire sets up in the shotgun at his 48. Lane falling harder again now. It hasn't stopped all day. It's a matter of degree. Right, what do we got? Delay again? Offense delay. That's it. So five yards. That's another Still five. So it's second and 21. It's second and 26. You have to throw a little farther. That thumping I'm hearing is that? Is there somebody building a house in here? No, there's some, someone who I think might not be a well man down below us <laughs> pounding on a drum and yelling at the people they shouldn't be here if they're not wearing red. <laughs> we don't know who he is. Well, I'll tell you, that's what I want to do. We don't plan to find out. Oh, yeah, I want to spend the Sunday afternoon beating on a drum. Sire again in the shotgun, second down and 26. 13-9 Jets, 7.28 to play. Picked off, Carl Howard has it for the Jets. Looking for blockers, he's got a whole array as he comes down inside the 40. And so the Jets intercept Frank Sire for a second time. And the Chiefs drive stops and comes 32 yards back at them with the return. Sire makes the tackle, that's because MacArthur knocked him into the play. But let's take a look at Carl Howard. Sire, when he throws this ball, it looks like the ball rises on him. And look at the ball come up. Just no chance for Carlos Carson. Now, when Howard gets the ball and goes downfield, MacArthur is going to smack Sire right into Howard. Well, here it comes. Watch number 57. MacArthur, he hits Sire. And he, nice play. Nice backside tackle. So 
the Jets now can put the lid on and nail it shut if they can take it in here, leading 13 to 9 with 7.17 to play in the rain. McNeil down to the 32 yard line. Jets will look to run the clock as we go back to the scoreboard. Clock winding down to seven minutes to play, and now the Colts with another field goal by Biasucci have taken a two point lead over the heavily favored Dolphins at Miami. Dallas and New England stay at 14 7. Houston has extended its lead to even more now. They're up 20 to 3 over the Steelers. Both those teams went in with five and three records. Part of a three way tie for the lead after eight games. The Browns were also five and three, and they're winning handily over Buffalo at the moment. Second and five, Roger Vick runs the ball for the Jets, and he gets the first down as he thunders down to the 25-yard line, tackled by Leonard Griffin. When you look at Vick and you look at Freeman McNeil running the football, you've got to give all the credit in the world to this offensive line of the New York Jets. Remember, there are no legitimate tackles on this offensive line. It's made up of guards and centers, and they're really doing the job. They're getting out front of the ball carrier. They're picking up six at a time, seven at a time, and going down. Look, Vick is 34 yards. Freeman McNeil is on his way to 200. Jack Del Rio was shaking up a little bit on the play. Caught him again in his back pedal. It's interesting, Paul, with 619 to go in the game. The Jets without all those starters. Maybe the best thing that ever happened to Freeman McNeil was getting benched as a starter, at least to begin the Seattle game, because he's come back to play one of his finest games. Now in his seventh year from UCLA. Jets are leading by four, 13 to nine. Is he ever? Jets with a very poor record coming off Monday night game. They are three and 12 over the years on short week games. And as we mentioned earlier, Coach Joe Walton brought that up with his players every day this week. It takes a superior effort, more concentration than ever, to play our best on a short week. Particularly a very emotional win, upsetting Seattle. Results of the NBC Sports viewer survey of the greatest runner of all time in the opinion of the viewers. You can cast your vote by calling one of the 900 numbers. Right now, receivers to either side. Sone is to the right. Al to the left. Throw and a catch. Coming down with the ball is Billy Griggs. It was the end zone Monday night against Seattle for the go-ahead touchdown. And the Jets now have it first and goal as Lloyd Burris, last line of defense, made the stop, one of the safeties. To the left of the screen, Lloyd Burris lined up on Briggs. On Griggs, excuse me. And still didn't cover him. Look at Griggs, gets off the line of scrimmage, and that is a strong safety that's supposed to be covering him man on man. Burris didn't stay with him. Very important for the Jets that their normal regular starting tight end, Mickey Schuler, who went down with an ankle injury and was thought to be out for as much as a month, is ready to play today, although the ankle is still very tender, but they haven't had a go to him, and his backups have done very well. Straight power run. Roger Vick takes on tacklers behind the blocking. Guy Bingham, the center, Banker and Fields, the guards, Sweeney and Alexander, the tackles for the Jets as they move out Kansas City's defensive front. Right now, the Jets are ready to pound it in as they're down close. Second and goal from the three. Run that play again. They might. Well, that maybe picked up, what, six? Threw it to that big load going up in the middle. Go with wide off to either side. Now coming back in motion is Cleaver to block. There it is. Vic to run. He didn't get much, though. Chief shot the gap, filled, and knocked him down at the two. We, we, we've said so much about the, the inside, you know, like Banker, Bingham, and Field. But we got Sweeney and Alexander. They're playing the guards, playing tackles. Here's Alexander, number 60. Take a look at him. He's going down to just seal to the outside. He picks up the linebacker, Pearson, kind of tackle him a little bit, pull his hands away. But that play was run to the other side. All his job was is to cut off. Guard his whole career. He had a move to tackle this year because of injuries. 11th year from LSU. O'Brien looks, swings it out with the ball is Blyden, but he loses his footing at the five, and there were tacklers there, so the Jets will have to settle for a field goal try. Game clock winds down inside. Three minutes to play, and the Jets lead 13 to nine. 
This play here, it just looked like everybody was in slow motion. Number one was number 81, Griggs, couldn't get off the line of scrimmage. So the only throw that he had to make out here was Blige, and the coverage was, was there. Just no chance of making a turn. Gives you an idea of how much rain we've had, and it's rained this entire game. We could have a tie here and go into overtime. Yes, we could. Field with the extra point here. Field goal would make it a seven point advantage for the Jets. They'll be up 16 to 9 if Leahy's good. This will be a 21 yard try. Like an extra point. He spins it up, and the Jets extend their lead to seven points with 219 to play. So Kansas City has to take it in and kick an extra point to tie the game. With Paul McGuire, this is Don Cricky at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City on a rainy, cold November day. The Jets have extended their lead now to 16 to 9. The game was tied at the half, three all. Kansas City led not that long ago, 9 to 6. Jets came back with 10 straight points, though. A touchdown throw from O'Brien to Toon from 18 yards out, followed by yet another Pat Leahy field goal. Into the end zone, and Palmer is crossing by more experienced players. Stay in there. So the Chiefs have a must drive coming up. 2.13 to play, and they need a touchdown. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. Joey, it's time for bed. Indianapolis Colts coming back strong today at Miami over the favored Dolphins and leading 23-21 in the fourth quarter as the five teams tied for first in the AFC East in action today, including the Jets, who will go to 5-4 and four with a win today. The L.A. Rams and the Cardinals now tied up 24-all. Moriarty in the backfield. He's there to block. Palmer's in the backfield. He's there to catch. Coming out. As the Chiefs set up in a shotgun on first down and 10. Needing a long drive for a touchdown. Sire looks. Man is open. Stephon Page with a beautifully executed move in the midst of defenders. He comes down with the ball. A 23-yard gain as we're down to the two-minute warning. So the Chiefs have something left in the rain at Arrowhead, and we'll be back with their final drive. A check of the individual report performances today. The grades given out to Sire. Well, he's thrown the two interceptions. That's been a problem, but he's hit a lot of big throws and has to hit more now with two minutes to play, and the Chiefs needing a touchdown and an extra point to tie. Lowry has been the only man to score today for the Chiefs with three for three on field goal tries. O'Brien passing conservatively, but for a touchdown on his last throw to El Toon. He's been sacked five times. Flecko's return has been a big story here. He's played the whole game. He's been in and out a bit. Nichols has been in, but Flecko's made some big plays, including a sack where he just busted open the Kansas City pass blocking and sacked the quarterback. First game as you see since last December. He's the kind of guy when other players see him, they have a little sore thumb or something, and they want to sit out for a player, so they look at Klecko and say, if he can play on those legs, I can play with anything. First and 10 for the Chiefs, who trail 16-9. Sire stands in, has an open man. Across the middle of the field is Carlos Carson. Carson gets down to the 45-yard line of the Jets, another first down. Remember now, Kansas City, they only have two timeouts. They took one earlier in the game when they were on a drive that they wanted to get a touchdown, which they took a field goal instead. Lofted ball up for grabs, and the Jets pick it off. Carl Howard gets his second. You know, this is the second time to Henry Marshall now. Henry Marshall broke it off again. Now, either he's running the wrong patterns or Sire's calling numbers he don't know about. Great interception by Howard. He stayed with it. But when you take a look at this play, Sire did this once before. Now, watch what happens. You see Marshall breaking off number 89. Howard's just staying with the football. Now, either it's... I got to believe that, that Marshall ran the wrong play. Carl Howard called on to start today for the Jets because of the injury to Russell Carter with two interceptions. Now watch, he breaks it to the inside. 
or to the outside. And Sarge throws the ball downfield. Raymond McNeil, both arms on the ball, runs the ball and the clock as the Chiefs use one of their two timeouts with 1.25 to play. Huddle, the Chiefs can stop the clock just once more. Second down and eight coming up for the Jets, who lead 16 to nine with 1.25 to play. Jets will maintain a share of first in the AFC East. Out to the 27-yard line. Freeman McNeil runs the ball. Eric Holly knocks him down. The Chiefs were 6-10 in 1985. Went to the playoffs last season for the first time in 15 years. But now with their eighth consecutive defeat in the offing. Back to the drawing board as you see what the Jets have the rest of the way. Be tied for the division lead with at least one team at day's end. A couple of tough ones to close out the season at Miami and New England. Raymond McNeil keeps it in bounds and runs ahead with 44 seconds to play. Chiefs call their last timeout. Well, I don't know if they call the timeout yet or not. I think they're looking at a measurement here. And if if Freeman McNeil makes the first down, then it is all over with. Doesn't make any difference what they do. The Chiefs have this remaining. They'll be happy to see the Raiders come and go. Bleak year in Kansas City. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Michael Weissman. The coordinating producer of NFL football, Ted Nathanson. The producer of today's game, David Neal. The director, Richard Klein. Associate director, Joe Michaels, as we're down to 44 seconds to play. The Chiefs and the Jets lining up. The Jets, a very, very important win. Joe Klecko's heralded return. He was a big part of the defense. And again, they come up with a spirited effort for 60 minutes. Look at that. Isn't that something? They have now. Yeah, they have now. I Look. just never, you know, I... It's hard for me to believe this team is this bad. You saw them all through the preseason. They were just stupendous, weren't they? Oh, I mean, they were averaging 200 and some yards a game, rushing the football, doing all things well, and then the strike. And that strike hurt everyone. Thanks also in the booth to Don Wilsey, Kevin Mayer, Swede Mom, and Ken McAllister. As we're down to 27 seconds and the clock winding out, the Jets will go back to New York, ready to take on the Bills at Giants Stadium their next time out. As the Jets go to five and four, and the Chiefs, a playoff team a season ago, slumped to one and eight. Tim Brown might be playing here next year. Uh, and what a day he had. Freeman McNeil, 26 carries, 184 yards. What's that, his second best? Second best ever. In 85, he had 192. He was sensational from the first time he got the ball today. Run for 14 yards, weaving his way right up the middle of Kansas City. And he has really enabled the Jets to maintain the ball. Jets didn't turn it over today in this no, range. That's true. They did not. And another thing, Freeman McNeil, when, when people interview Freeman, he's going to say after this ball game, thank you, offensive line and tight end. Because they, they just did a tremendous job for him. That offensive line... You know, when you see a guy with, I and mean, he did some great running, but when you see a guy with the kind of yardage he picked up today, 184 yards, you've got to talk to the guys that made it. Well, we're hoping with time permitting to talk to him on NFL Live, Freeman McNeil. As the Jets go into the countdown now, Chiefs powerless to stop the clock. This one is history. The Jets defeat the Chiefs for the fourth consecutive time. Coach Walton coming off the field. Joe Klecko, still boyish looking in his 11th year. Thank you very Best eighth round draft choice in the history of football, maybe. So the gun sounds, the numbers are final. It's the Jets 16, Kansas City 9. Coach Walton, happy to be heading to the locker room. And now out of KC. Well, he knows he still, they still have a share of the lead in the East. So no matter what the other teams do, they're going to be tied with at least one person or one team. Now it's time for the most valuable player award sponsored by Budweiser. Today's MVP is Freeman McNeil of the New York Jets. Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all the MVPs selected in today's game. And he was something. 184 yards, second best day of his career running the ball. Say a heads up play he made too between O'Brien and McNeil on that lateral when O'Brien looked like he might be getting sacked and just flipped that ball back to McNeil, took the ball down to the one yard line or the five yard line. 
Joe Klecko, an arm around his highly regarded quarterback, Ken O'Brien. Some of the Jet faithful are here. At the moment, with just one final in today, the Jets have the share of first place. Somebody else is going to be there with him. New England is losing. Miami is losing. Buffalo is losing. But Indianapolis and Miami is going to win, so there'll be a co-leader.